This video looks at a typical systematic review and how it might be set up with an EPI Reviewer 4. Although there may not be such a thing as a typical systematic review, this demonstration review will include many of the stages different systematic reviews may contain. Please note that in our demonstration review, we have kept the number of items very low to make the demonstration easier to follow. An overview of the review flow has been set up in the Diagrams tab. You can use the diagram functions to keep track of your process. I will refer to this diagram periodically to show where we are in the process. This demonstration review was a two-stage review that contained a mapping stage and an in-depth review stage. We started with a very broad topic. After searching different databases, we obtained 268 items and imported them into our review. After duplicate removal, the items were screened on title and abstract and 53 potentially relevant items were identified. Out of 53 items, we were able to retrieve the full text for 49 and after applying our screening tool to the full text, we ended up with 20 includes. After removing one link study, our keywording or mapping tool was applied. From the map of studies, we developed a more narrow review question and four studies were included for the final review question. Those studies were then data extracted. This included collecting numeric outcome data and a statistical meta-analysis was carried out. Again, please note that the number of items you see for the demonstration review are very low and an actual systematic review would probably contain many times more items. In the Sources tab, we can see the different searches that were carried out and the number of items imported for each source. If we look at the source log, we can see details about each source. In the Sources tab, we can also see details on duplicate removal. If we click into Manage Duplicates, we can see the duplicate checking that has been carried out. Duplicate groups are displayed on the left. Clicking on a group will display the individual items in the group. Once the items have been imported and checked for duplicates, we can then apply our screening tool. In this example, we are carrying out double screening, meaning two people will be applying the screening tool to the same item. Our screening on title and abstract tool is set up in the codes tab as a number of exclude criteria and a final include criteria. It is a good idea to plan ahead of time the process you are going to follow. In the Diagram tab, we have sketched out the approach that we have taken in a work assignment diagram. There are three people working in this review, so we will have two screening groups with one person in both groups. As well, we are going to double screen the items. In the Codes tab, we have created an allocation codes tool that is used to identify the items that we allocated. Applying a code such as Group 1 Title and Abstract to items makes it easier to identify what items will be included in a work assignment. In the Collaborate tab, the allocations or coding assignments are created. The items under Group 1 Title and Abstract have been assigned to reviewers Stephen and Donald. By using coding assignments, the system will keep track of what items you have coded and what still needs to be coded. When each person has completed their coding, comparisons can be set up to show coding statistics and coding reports. Because our screening tool is set up as a number of exclude and include criteria, the items that have been included based on title and abstract can easily be identified by running a frequency report. As these are items you will want to retrieve the full text for, we can create a retrieval status tool to help manage that process. As each item is retrieved, it can be assigned the appropriate code from the tool. Once retrieval is complete, we want to apply the Screening on Full Report tool. As with Screening on Title and Abstract, it is a good idea to plan how to allocate the work. This can be seen in the diagram. The Allocation Codes tool can be used to identify the items for allocation, and the work assignments can be created in the Collaborate tab. When the coding is complete, a comparison can be created to identify the agreements and reconcile the disagreements. As with screening on title and abstract, the includes from screening on full report can be easily identified by running a frequency report. In our demonstration review, these included items make up our map of studies and the mapping or keywording tool can now be applied. This tool consists of a number of questions about the studies. 
At this point, we are not looking at the data in the studies, but rather information about the studies, such as the focus and settings and population. As you can see in the diagram, we are not double coding using this tool, although the work was split between two reviewers. This is represented in the Allocation Codes tool and the Work Assignments in the Collaborate tab. After the items are coded, there are a number of ways to examine the results of the mapping or keywording process. You can run searches based on codes or text. Frequency and cross-tab reports to identify studies that you wish to examine further. By cross-tabulating two questions, you can create a matrix of the different responses. You can generate and save reports that will compare the responses to different questions across selected items. These reports can be saved in many different formats. You can create a report sets tool to identify which studies you wish to run against a particular save report. In our example, after running a number of reports and looking at the data, we developed a more specific review question that would apply to a subsection of the MAP studies. In this case, we are using the Allocation Codes tool to easily identify those four studies. In this review, only one person carried out the data extraction as shown in the Work Assignment Diagram and the Collaborate tab. The data extraction tool was set up as a number of sections with each section having a number of questions. The questions in the data extraction tool are set up to help us collect details from the studies that will allow us to answer our review question. Some questions have discrete answers while others require textual responses. Some questions require both. You can see the full tool by selecting it and clicking on the print code set icon. In our review, we carried out inductive coding to develop descriptive and analytic themes. Epi Reviewer allows you to highlight text in your uploaded documents and assign codes to that highlighted text. You can then generate reports displaying the text associated with a particular code. This tool also contains questions for collecting numeric outcome data. In this example, we were able to predefine a number of interventions, outcomes, and comparisons, making it easier to enter the data while coding. You can enter multiple outcomes per study, and depending on the outcome type selected, you can enter your data in many different ways. After the data collection was complete, a number of reports were created to help display the data in various ways. There are a number of report formats available, allowing you to group questions to best display your results. For running a meta-analysis, you can record multiple outcomes for each study and combine the outcomes from the different studies as appropriate. A statistical meta-analysis can then be run on those outcomes that show the statistics, forest plot, and funnel plot. Returning to the review flow diagram, we have looked at most of the steps in our review and how Epi Reviewer can help you manage those steps. More detailed information about Epi Reviewer's functions can be found in our other videos and the user manual. For more information about Epi Reviewer 4, Please go to the App Reviewer 4 Gateway. The web address is shown on the screen.